Hey there, fellow classic comic collectors. As always, I'm Scott Harris King, and today uh, is a very special day. This will be airing on December 21st, which happens to be my wedding anniversary. So in celebration of my wedding anniversary, I want to talk about some anniversary issues and show off just a handful of anniversary issues. Now, anniversary issues, of course, are a big cool thing in comics, and there's like three basic types of um, anniversary issues. Uh, there's real anniversary issues. So there's issues where it's like 70 years of Captain America or, you know, 50 years of Batman. And those are cool. Uh, you don't really see those quite as often because they're, you know, based on on real anniversaries. Um, things like, uh, you know, 25 years of Marvel is probably one of the best known ones because they had those frame covers for every one of the Marvel books that came out that month with the uh, November 1986 cover date then there is uh, comic book anniversaries which is usually 100th issues but also 50 uh sometimes 150 sometimes even like a 75th will have like a like an oversize and it'll say something like 200th anniversary issue 300th anniversary issue and um those are cool and then there are the more rare versions of that where it's a character who is celebrating an anniversary in a title so it'll be like detective 526 is the 500th issue with batman so it'll be like 500th issue um so i've got a lot of anniversary issues obviously i have uh you know 10,000 comics and there's a lot of them uh, back in the day they didn't celebrate the anniversary issue so much so a lot of the earlier ones it'll just it just has the number on it and there's nothing particularly special about it um it really sort of caught on uh, more in terms of the the numbers um in in the late 60s early 70s is when they really started doing it there's some earlier examples for sure um but that's when it really started becoming like a standard thing previously it was sort of like depended on the the specific editor whether they wanted to make a big deal out of it um sometimes they'll just have a blurb on the cover that's like 200th issue but there's nothing like inside to actually celebrate it um and uh some of the anniversary issues are renowned for being terrible avengers 200 is probably the most famous of the like really terrible anniversary issues um there's other ones that are you know a lot of times they'll be like a a retrospective um things like um say fantastic four 100 or spider-man 100 these things where it's like they fight all the villains they fought in the first hundred issues or here's a look back at uh all the covers you know like captain america 400 it was a thing when they were doing those anniversary issues they'd have this gallery with like all of the covers on it and stuff like that um my favorite anniversary issue I don't actually have anymore is one that I need to reacquire and that is Gru number 100 and the reason I love Gru 100 is because something actually happens in it you know Gru is like um, a massive moron but in that story um, he actually learns how to read and starts educating himself and starting in that issue he is slightly less of a giant moron so instead of being an enormous moron he's just a large moron because he he learns he, he teaches himself and um, I really thought that was an interesting character development after 100 issues to sort of shift the fundamental piece of what the humor is based on it was just it was really cool um, so that's an issue that I want to reacquire I made the poor decision at one point to get rid of most of my Gru run I just cut the first 20 issues I had the, the full run some point here I need to pick up issue 100 again but um there's lots of cool ones there's some that stand out for me and I've picked like three to show you that have particularly meaning for me for one reason or another starting here with uh, Warlord number 100 you can see my copy is signed by um Adam Kubert who was the artist uh, written by Michael Fleischer and then um, cover by the great Mike Grell. Warlord is one of the first comics I ever started reading. Uh, Warlord number 90 was my first issue. 
And in Warlord, there's this storyline that starts in issue 75 and runs all the way to issue 100, including a couple annuals. So it's this huge epic story, and it concludes in issue 100, and a bunch of stuff happens in issue 100. You conclude that storyline, the bad guy is killed, the city, like, the city has been conquered, and they reclaim the city. Um, but several of the main characters in the series, from when I had started reading it, end up dying in this issue. Um, and some of the main characters, pe characters that had been around for 30, 40, 50 issues, several of them die. And this issue is part of this huge epic conclusion. And it really made a big impression on me. Um, and then at the end, something happens that kicks off this, the next epic storyline, which is this quest that lasts for like 15 issues. That actually lost me a little bit. And for I temporarily stopped reading for a little while during that. Um, but this is one of the first anniversary issues that I that I got and it's also one of the first ones that I understood the importance of what was happening because I had been along for enough of the storyline that it was building to. Um, so uh, Warlord is, is a comic I'm a huge fan of. So Warlord number 100 is one of these anniversary issues that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I've also got here Sergeant Fury number 100 which is another one that I absolutely love. First of all, Gil Kane cover, frame cover, um, and uh, it just has this little thing saying special 100th issue, but it actually has a special 100th issue story in here. And what happens is, um, in a couple of the annuals, they had had flash forwards, right? So most of the Sergeant Fear, of course, is set in World War II. They had a couple stories that were set, um, one in the Korean War and then one in the Vietnam War. So here we are, this is coming out, cover date July, I think it's 72. And this is a story that takes place in the present day, 1972. So it it um, jumps forward 30 years from the previous issue. And you're at, it's at a Howler reunion. And the MC uh, at the reunion, because it's like a, a, like a special dinner honoring the Howling Commandos, is Stan Lee. So Stan Lee is in the book. And he's emceeing this thing, and one of the Howlers, um, Reb Ralston, the Southern guy, has become a progressive Southern um, senator. And of course, you know, um, at the time that would have been very controversial and was very controversial. And what happens is a person, um, a guy tries to assassinate him, and he, he fails. He accidentally um izzy takes a bullet izzy cohen takes a bullet for him and then the howlers um go on this mission to track down the assassin and capture him but it's in 1972 and there's these car chases through the city so it's very much like a 70s action movie um so i, I just love this uh this issue it's so out of the ordinary for sergeant fury it's like completely different from anything else in the entire run so that's always been a personal favorite. And then close behind Gru number 100, very close. Um, that has a lot of sentimental value to me. Anything with Gru has a lot of sentimental value. But uh, an anniversary issue that I absolutely love, and I have two copies of it. The other one's signed by the cover artist Dan Parent. Uh, and that is Jughead Volume 2, number 200. Here's Jughead with his special 200th anniversary drum kit. And I absolutely love the story in this issue. And what happens is in this issue is that Jughead ends up, uh, he doesn't sell his soul. What he does is he ends up trading his superhuman metabolism to a witch. I forget exactly why he's doing it, but um, so all of a sudden now he's eating like he normally does and he becomes incredibly fat because he doesn't have this sort of incredible superhuman ability to just uh process this food at an insanely inhuman speed and uh, so he becomes really fat and then um he basically goes to sabrina the teenage witch for help because in the old continuity the only person um who knew that sabrina was actually a witch was jughead and so jughead goes to sabrina and um 
she teams up with him and she manages to defeat the witch and get Jughead his metabolism back and he and he slims down right away. I just I really like the the team of Jughead and Sabrina and they've they've used that that team more recently in Jughead Volume Three. There was a whole storyline where they dated for a little bit and she eventually realized this guy's. He just, she was working at a burger stand, like, uh, as like a burger mascot. And so, um, he was basically dating her cause he wanted burgers. He's not, he wasn't actually interested in anyone romantically in that series. Um, and so they ended up becoming really good friends instead of dating, but there was this whole storyline with him and Sabrina and I love their chemistry. I love the way they play off each other. Later on, they did, uh, more recently they did a storyline where Archie was secretly dating Sabrina and no one knew about it. And to me, that was like, you know, whatever, man. Um, she just uh, honestly made so much more sense with Jughead. And I just really liked their relationship and their chemistry and their friendship much more than anything with her and Archie. So um, there's other characters that work fine with Archie, but Sabrina and Jughead are a great pair. I love seeing them together. This story is absolutely great. So Jughead number 200. Like I said, I do have another copy somewhere that's signed by Dan Perrin. I don't know what I did with it, but um, uh, that's it. I just want to share on my anniversary some of my favorite anniversary issues. Let me know in the comments below what are your favorite anniversary issues. You know, there's I had to think... Uh, I was trying to just pick three, and there's a lot that I left out. Avengers 100 obviously has the amazing art by Barry Windsor Smith. I'm just not that big of a fan of the story in there. Uh, my copy of Avengers 300, for instance, I have signed by both Walt Simonson and Stan Lee, who did a backup story um, in Avengers 300, recapping their origin. So that obviously has a lot of meaning to me, but again, I don't love the story in it that much. It's just okay. So I really had to think about what I wanted to pick for, for three to highlight. So I'd be really curious, what are your favorite anniversary issues? Let me know below, or what are your least favorite, or how do you feel about anniversary issues? Honestly, most of the time they're disappointing. Usually to me, they're only really satisfying if they do, like Warlord 100, conclude a big storyline. Thor 300 is, an, is another one that concludes a big storyline is really exciting. Um, Thor had some had some good anniversary issues over the years. Um, 400 was a good one. 350 was a great one. 200, um, stuff like that. So uh, let me know what you think. And uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.